we're now recording. This is going to be embedded systems and floating point math. So uh, one aspect of using any typical processor is that sometimes you use uh, integers and sometimes you actually need to use floating point numbers. And so we're going to look at uh, a little bit about the RX63N floating point unit and how that you can convert between a fixed point number, an integer, and a floating point number, and how floating point numbers are represented. So if you look at, uh, or if you think about floating point numbers, you're going to have maybe something like pi, 3.14, uh, 159, blah, 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 all that other stuff. You may have very small numbers, or you may have very large numbers. But nonetheless, the main thing you have to uh, consider is that you're going to have numbers that may have a greater than one or greater than value in binary, or you may have some that are on the other side of the decimal point. So if you look at 3.14, Obviously, that you have the integer part 3, and then in decimal, the 0.14 part, which you will need to actually convert both. And then when you put them both of those parts together, then you could uh, represent it as a floating point number. So let's take a look at some examples. So in decimal, think about this. If we have a very large number, like 2.5 times 10 to the 15th, well, there's a nice, nice aspect of that because the 2.5 part right here is relatively small. In other words, you only have a few digits that you have to worry about. And then if you look at, oh, there's a lot of zeros on there. Well, that just means that it's a very large number. So you actually have two different parts of this number. You have the um, mantissa part and the exponent part. And so we're going to do the same for a binary number. Specifically, we may have um, a number which is 2 times 2 to the 20th. And we were, we'll call this this floating point that has three, uh, three parts to it. Um, the sign, the significant and the exponent. I call it the mantissa, but we'll call it the significant for this point. And when we are using a particular um, standard, this being the IEEE 754 floating point standard, you have two variants of it. Uh, single precision means that you have eight bits devoted to the exponent. In other words, very large, very small number and then 23 bits uh, associated with the significant. Those are approximately doubled for a uh, double precision number because you're going to have, uh, in this case, uh, twice as many bits allocated for, um, for the uh, floating point number. In fact, in this case, the exponent gets a little bit bigger. Well, it gets a lot bit bigger. And you have actually uh, more bits to identify the significant. So let's take a look at a, uh, uh, a representation of floating point. The first thing to keep in mind is that when you're storing the information, when they created the standard, they said, you know what, you will always have the digit 1 as the first digit for any number that you have. Remember, we're talking binary, right? So you have either a 0 or a 1. It's kind of foolish to store leading zeros, lots and lots of leading zeros, because we're actually moving the decimal point around because we have an exponent. So let's take a look at, you know, let, let's actually step back and take a look at the process, and then I'm going to dig into it in a little bit more detail. So, number one, let's say we have the decimal number. 32.25, and this is in decimal. So what we will want to do is, of course, first convert into binary. 
and we're going to do it in the two different pieces. So 32, you're going to be representing in binary, and I just know off the top of my head, that that's the representation of 32. Do you agree with that? 2 to the 5th, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all right? Point 0.25 is a little bit harder to, uh, to examine, but this I know is that point 0.1 is equal to, binary, is equal to point 0.5 base 10. Point 0.01 is equal to 0.25 in decimal, 0 0.001 in binary is equal to 0.125 in decimal, 0 0.0001 is equal to 0 0.0625 in decimal, and on and on and on and on. So in this case, on the other side of that decimal is going to be 0, 1. And again, this is a binary representation of the number. Remember what I said. You're always going to have a leading 1 in the top position. In this case, there it is right there. And so according to my algorithm, what I will do I will move my decimal place over such that I will always have one point something. And look, I move my decimal point over one, two, three, four, five positions. Again, this is a decimal point in binary. So now if I look at that, I have one point Zero 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 another zero another zero and one times two to the fifth. So now in my floating point I'm gonna have a representation. First bit is sine. The next eight bits is the exponent. And then the next 23 bits is going to be the significant. Ah. And so I've already identified that my significant is going to be Remember, we remove that 1 at the beginning because it always will start with a 1. So it'll be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, another 0, 1. So let's see, we have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 23. I'm just putting the slash in there because I, you know, I group it in groups of four. Now comes the exponent. Oh, by the way, this is a positive number, so our sign is going to be a zero. Now comes the exponent, eight bits. Now remember, we wanted to do really big and really small numbers. So that means that uh, if we want to represent something really small or really big, we kind of have to maybe adjust the range such that we could have a number that will be, you know, times 2 to the negative something or other, right? Maybe the 127th. All the way up to uh, maybe something like uh, 2 to the 128th or something like that. Actually, it's not going to be so much. Well, it is going to be so much that big. And so to do that, what we will do is we will bias this exponent by 127. So in this case, the exponent number here is going to be whatever we would 
we determined by our, our shifting, plus 127, and that will be the value we put in there. That way we'll be able to represent very small numbers or very large numbers. So in this case, it's going to be 132, right? And, well, I just so happen to know that 132 is the same as 128 plus 4. So 1000, I believe, represents uh, 132. You agree? So this would be my representation. is 32.25 decimal, which is equal to 1000.0.01 in binary. And that's how you represent it in floating point.